Welcome to another edition of Around with Randall, your weekly podcast on making your nonprofit more effective for your community. And here is your host, the CEO and founder of Hallett Philanthropy, Randall Hallett. Appreciate you joining me on this edition of Around with Randall. Today's topic is the idea of teamwork and really building a team environment, why that's important. I'm spending more time with clients, in particular chief development officers, strategizing about this very subject. How is it that as we come out of COVID, we're bringing people back into offices to some degree, and in some ways, having people work remotely, particularly people like gift officers, how does a leader create a team environment, do team building? What we're beginning to see is is that there is a influx of job opportunities. And I've had a number of gift officers and chief development officers that I know and have worked with and do work with who have had opportunities in the last two months at exponential levels than they had even into the fourth quarter of 2020. The job market's opening up. And that's causing a lot of consternation in the idea of keeping people and for people who are trying to make a decision about what they want to do, staying where they are or trying to create the right value proposition for them to potentially go somewhere else. So this idea of team building becomes very important. So let's start with the bigger picture of why this is important. And then we'll end, as we always do, with the tactical about some things you can do to help build a team environment based on the rationale that we're going to discuss now. So the first thing is to realize is that creating a team, the right kind of team, the, with the right kind of attitude, with the right individuals looking into the team in terms of value, does many different things. First and foremost, it builds morale or support. And you might think, well, why is that important? We have a job to do. Well, actually, that leads to happiness. And studies tell us that happiness is really important in things like job retention or people who want to stay in a current job. Uh, 80% in a a survey done of 1,000 employees said that happiness is a determining factor in their wanting to stay. And that when we look at teachers, this idea of team environment is that teachers, a Hanover study done in 2015 found that when teachers work in team environments rather than isolated in classrooms, they are much happier and more likely to stay with that school district. So the studies say that if we create the right environment, people are more likely to stay. Number two is, is that it, sh- that it shares the workload. It's not isolating in terms of performance. Gallup did a tremendous study that talks about that when the right team goals are set and people share in those responsibilities, that there is a dramatic reduction in turnover. This increased retention in one study said that 54% were more likely to stay when they were part of an effective team. That's from vantage.com. Creating shared goals, not eliminating individual goals, but adding up individual goals into a team environment displaces one person's stress in a way that's incredibly important. It also, number three, improves efficiency. It it increases productivity in our office by as much as 20% when the team environment is strong and positive. So you get more out of the parts as a whole than if you just isolate them and silo them just to do their work. There's also a higher quality of work that comes from a great team environment. People are less stressed and having the ability, 61% indicated that they produce at a higher level when they have others to utilize in that process sharing ideas, sharing tips of the trade, working together for a single 
direction. So not only do you have an increase in efficiency, you have a higher quality of work. The other thing that I find interesting is, is that team environments create better ideas. This is called the Medici effect. It was written by uh, Frank Johansson in a, in a tremendous book. What it means is, is that ideas don't come or the best ideas don't come from a siloing of one's mind. It comes from interaction and discussing alternatives. In fact, a study done by, by, McKin- by McKinley indicated that there's a 35% increase in ideas becoming effective or becoming implementational when you do it as a team. And so there's all of this research that's saying, showing that when we have the right team environment, we have better production, we have happier employees, higher retention, higher quality, and better overall ideas that facilitate a higher level of work. Now the complicated part is how do you do that? How do we as leaders provide an environment that is conducive, supportive, proactionary on the team front effort perspective? Don't forget that it's really expensive to replace employees. We talked about this in a podcast about two months ago. And what we found was, is that it can cost as much as $150,000 for an employee in terms of productivity loss for an office or a company. And that doesn't include the lost opportunity, which we know as nonprofit leaders comes if it's a gift officer that leaves. We lose all of those relationships. And if they're a good gift officer, that's even worse because they may be producing a million, two million, three million dollars in revenue. And you've got to retrain and rebring someone in and rebuild those relationships if possible. So we want to reduce expense, create the right environment to create productivity. And so here's the tactical. How do we do this? Well, the first is, is I think, is we hire more effectively. I'm a big believer in the tactical you know, job level skills that are necessary and them being present when an employee or when a, a candidate is looking for the job. But I think sometimes we rush to those too often as the only maybe test or, or uh, integration opportunities that were, are, will they integrate into the office? We rush to skill too quickly. There's a lot of tests out there and we've talked about tests from Myers-Briggs to uh, the Berkeley tests in terms of emotional stability, having employee or candidates before they become employees, take some of those tests to see if they fit in to the environment is important. One or two really off employees can mess up a whole team environment. So when you're hiring, take that extra time, that extra step, and make sure they fit personality-wise, communication-wise, culturally with your office in terms of what you're trying to accomplish. The second is, is to lead the way, which means doing things that you ask others to do, but with some restrictions as well. I mentioned in a podcast just recently that I, in terms of work-life balance, probably the worst But I'm very clear with the people I work with, either as clients or when I was managing more people, that I'm not wanting them to respond to an email or text at 11 or 12 o'clock. That's when sometimes I find quiet time in my own house to catch up on my day. So the first thing is setting boundaries for yourself and communicating those boundaries for employees. So there's a work-life balance. And if you're looking for more information on that, that's a podcast, just a few before this one that go into details about ways that you can do that. Number two is to set goals that are both individual and then additive up into team goals so that everybody can share in the responsibility. When we diffuse 
one person's stress that I'm the only one that has to produce, or I feel like I'm all by myself. What happens in that moment is we reduce the level of anxiety one has, and we increase the ownership that the team has. So sharing goals of what everybody's doing is critically important. Posting those goals, and by the way, the metrics that go along with them, is a great way of building team environment. If you're a leader and you have multiple gift officers, posting metrics on a monthly basis or regular basis should be a no-brainer. It should be something that comes naturally to what we're trying to accomplish. What is everybody doing in this process? Number three is providing team rewards or group awards. Do you take your monthly meeting and have five or 10 minutes and pass out little $5 coffee cards or little, a little, uh, it doesn't have to be big, little things that really demonstrate you as a leader appreciating what the team is doing or what individuals on the team who went above and beyond the call of duty. But here's even more, something more important. Do you give other people in the team time to recognize each other? There are studies out there that say that it actually means more when done on a regular basis, when it comes from a teammate in terms of that recognition than it does from a manager, supervisor, or leader. It doesn't mean it should be one or the other. What I'm advocating for here is both. Giving employees a chance to recognize each other as well as you as the leader recognizing them for their work that they do. Make every meeting a team meeting. What is it that I'm thinking or, or speaking of here? The first is, is that we're going to have some rules in the team meeting. One of which is, is that we're going to be present. If you've listened to any of my podcasts or know me at any at all or well at all, you know that I'm not a, a Facebook, uh, Twitter person, don't have accounts, don't really follow but what I have found is, is that that limits my willingness or wanting to enter into a world that in some ways I really don't understand. But that also makes me more present in the conversations. I'm here. How do you get your team to be here? Cell phones down, cell phones off. Team rules can also mean we're going to listen to other people's opinions with respect. And we're going to appreciate they have a different perspective than we do because of age, because of cultural differences, because of experiential differences. We're going to respect those differences. Creating a team meeting and having it constant is about the ability to be respectful of someone else's viewpoint, of their thoughts, of their contributions, even if they're not implemented they're incredibly important in the process of getting everybody to be involved. Set up team building activities is the fifth. It used to be, particularly when I was in college, you would go do trust falls and obstacle courses. I'm not sure that's really what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is creating a social environment that's outside the office. Do you have a group, let's go get a cup of coffee or it's five o'clock or six o'clock on a Saturday? I'm buying appetizers and the first cocktail at the local establishment. How do you build social out opportunities in terms of getting out of the office to know each other on a personal level? Can you go to a sporting event and sit together? Do you include family members in this conversation? A great example that I always turn to in this exam in this uh, situation is uh, at the University of Oklahoma. Started with Bob Stoops, who is the for, who is the former football coach, now moved into Lincoln Riley. On Thursdays during the football season, because coaches work probably more hours than they should, they have mandatory family night. That on Thursday night during the season, all the family members come up. The kids play on the field. They have touch football. They have takeout, you know, buffet, barbecue, whatever. And they allow the families to be a part of what the coaches are doing in their environment. Team building. So what can you do that allows you to build a social environment for your team? Number five, opening communication lines. Both formally, so how often you do evaluations and reviews, and informally, which actually I think are more important. I miss the opportunity since I got out of direct supervision 
in a academic medical center, just to walk down the hallway and stick my head in people's offices is down and say, how you doing? What's going on? I'm more isolated. So now I try to do it more via Zoom. I start every conversation, every email, or at least attempt to with asking about their personal life. How are things going? Had a colleague who removed. How did it go? If you've got, you know, people with small kids, how's school going? How are the kids? Creating communication unofficially is really important. One additional thing you might consider is possibly even surveying your inner office about what they think about communication and what the team building team environment looks like. Lastly, I want to bring up the idea of layout, office layout. I'm more of a traditional office person, but I'm also not the typical employee anymore. I'm getting older and they view their offices differently. It's more open. Something to consider if financially feasible to create a more office, open office setting where people can communicate while still being effective and not bothering others in that process. In all of this, I would be remiss if I didn't say that being a good leader in a team environment is about listening more and talking less. And if you apply any of those particular tactical aspects, whether it's uh, the way in which you hire or whether it's in the way you set goals or you do the rewards or you set up uh, activities and uh, opportunities for people to get to know each other, the leader should try to pull back a little bit many times to allow the group to have that interaction. A lot of great things about team building in terms of efficiency, effectiveness, quality of work, but it's the tactical that make the biggest difference in terms of your ability to bring those out of the people that are working together to make your organization even stronger in the community. Just a couple of quick reminders, as always, if you like this, if you think this is helpful, if it's on the YouTube channel you're watching, Via, via video or you're listening via the podcast, like it, leave a review, most importantly, share it with someone else. If they could be, if they think you, this could be helpful to them, that would be terrific. If we can all find a better way of serving our nonprofits and the needs of our community, that's a win. I look at this as my 21st century classroom. Not a lot about how philanthropy, just about how you can be more effective. Also, don't forget the blogs on HowlettPhilanthropy.com, posting two or three a week on different aspects of the world in which we see it, and possibly some thoughts for you to take back to think about. And if you'd like to communicate with me and tell me an idea for a podcast where this came from, uh, actually, uh, an anonymous uh, emailer, uh, asked to be anonymous, asked if we could talk about team building, that's podcast at HowlettPhilanthropy.com. Or if you disagree with me, that's Reeks, R-E-E-K-S. R-E-E-K-S at HowlettPhilanthropy.com. Either way, it gets to me. I'm glad to respond and talk to you a little bit about your concerns or your thoughts on this podcast. We live in a world that's a little bit chaotic right now. And what we're finding is, is that chaos leads to holes in our community and people's needs. And nonprofits can serve an important role in filling those gaps. As a nonprofit professional, whether you're an executive assistant or you're the chief development officer or you're the CEO, it doesn't make any difference. What we do is important and what you do is important to make a difference in the lives of people in your community. And it's never been more important. And I don't think it's talked about or celebrated enough. And so let me commend you as the idea of team building in that spirit to say thank you for what you do. It makes a big difference. I hope you feel that every day. And don't forget my all-time favorite saying, some people make things happen, some people watch things happen, then there are those who wondered what happened. We live in a world where there seem to be a lot of people wondering what happened. And your work, our work, nonprofit work, philanthropy overall, is about people who want to make things happen. For those people we're trying to help, we're just trying to get along. And if you're doing that, then you're doing incredibly important things each and every day. Thank you for joining me here on Around with Randall. Can't wait to see you next time. And don't forget, make it a great day. (music) 